Hi, Mike from Mike's Carburetor Parts. Uh, I'm making this video about a uh, Rochester one barrel downdraft, the Rochester B. This one is a manual choke, and I'm making this video uh, for the DVD series. We'll be doing a complete rebuild on this, and uh, we're going to first tear it down so you can uh, see uh, where the parts are. And I might point out a few things along the way might be helpful to you okay. so as you can see this one just has uh, four screws on the top this is our fast idle lever has a spring on it. Uh, we have this uh, hardware kit that includes a spring. I can see this spring's no good. Somebody's cut it and bent it. Okay. Everything in my bin here so it can be cleaned. Okay, we'll put a new float in there. Fortunately, the floats are still available for this. And when I can get new stuff, I put it in there because so, you never know. You may discontinue the stuff tomorrow. Doesn't take much of an excuse. Okay, so this is your main jet here. And uh, the, the jet size will be stamped on the top. Okay, this is your where your power piston goes. Okay, you have a check ball in here, and this is uh, when you have uh, you'll have uh, two or three check balls. That's the smallest check ball goes in here, and not the aluminum one. Uh, some of these carburetors have a, a screen down in here. Just get cleaned out good and leave it alone. Uh, a lot of these carburetors, this will be missing or broken off. They're just pressed in. Uh, we sell these in our hardware kit. Uh, they, they're included there. This is your power piston. You see this one's frozen in there. It has to be very free. It has to be able to go up and down uh, without any problem problems. You don't want it sticky at all, so uh, you got to get it out to clean it. You have to be real careful that we don't crush it or break it because you can't buy new ones. They're pretty hard to come by. I'll just work on it easy here. Okay. There's a spring underneath it. Don't lose the spring. You can't get those either. And what I do with these after I clean it, I buff them off good with the buffer and get that outside clean. I'll uh, clean this. Uh, if you have a oh, kind of a bottle brush or something, uh, you know, brush this out. Like I say, it needs to move up and down freely. So by the time I buff this and cleaned out that hole, it'll probably they usually move up and down just fine. But this right here is what your uh, your little check ball will fit on uh, here, and this moves up. And what happens? The vacuum will suck this down, and the check ball will close off the port there, and uh, uh, won't let any extra fuel in. And when the uh, 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 When you're powered up, you lose vacuum, and this will uh, pop up, open that check ball, and allow a uh, little extra fuel to get in. Okay.
Okay, so um, now I generally take these all the way apart. Um, and do it without breaking the screw. grind it down first okay so I will grind this down and probably off camera uh, take it all apart and we'll put it back together uh, in the video so you see how it goes okay we'll take our little linkage up here I would suggest that uh, you get your digital camera out when you're doing this and take lots of pictures uh, in case you have a question on how something uh, goes back on. See how this is put together, which is correct. So this is your main discharge tube right here. This is, um, and there is a check ball down there, and it's not unusual for those to get stuck, so I'll have to work on that to get it out. Um, sometimes you got to throw a float ball away to get it out. Now, if, they, if they're stuck, you, what you can do, well, let me get it apart here, and I'll show you. And I like doing it. Unless it's necessary, I usually go try and find another float bowl. But these things tend to sit around for quite a while and uh, the water will get in there and, and corrode and uh, then the check ball gets stuck in there. And... No, no persuasion will... Uh... Check ball's still in there. We'll see if it comes out after clean. Now, uh, you'll check your uh, uh, throttle body here and make sure that this isn't, uh, in ways doesn't matter, but up and down. Um, if you get too much slack, you're going to have a vacuum leak right here. Uh, this one isn't bad. What is loose, though, I can see is this right here. If you can see that moving right there. Now, what I do, it's on a little... Uh, uh, what I what you can do here is uh, uh, put it in a vise and take a uh, brass I'd use a brass maybe uh, drift punch and just you know beat it out let it mushroom out and usually that will stiffen it up uh, now if that don't work you're gonna have to uh, take it clear apart and uh, braise it which I have done too but try and uh, just beat on it and just mushroom out and usually that'll tighten it up enough where you'll be okay and uh, you can see it's not coming off so it's not too bad but uh, now's the time to take care of that so uh, I'm gonna take this apart too but again I the first thing I'm gonna do is grind these down well actually the first thing I'm gonna do is mark the uh, mark the valve like so that way I know I'm going to get it back on uh, exactly the same way now let me grind it Okay, so I grind these down. Um, you don't want to mess with these too much. You will, you'll, the screws break very easily. If you don't grind them down, you're going to break the screw and you're going to have to drill and tap. And you grind them down flush. Have back a lot of time they're mushroomed. Sometimes they're just corroded. Uh, you grind them down flush and uh, you'll seldom have trouble 
getting these screws out. As you can see, they, they came right out, so that's great. So now I can take it apart and get it all clean. Uh, you can rebuild it without doing this, but uh, to me, that's not rebuilding. Okay, so now we got that apart. Um, I think we're good to go. Yeah, we're going to uh, get this all cleaned up, and then I'll come back and we'll start putting it back together. Okay, we're going to work on getting this uh, Rochester one barrel put back together. Um, I'll point out some things along the way here. <clears throat> got it all cleaned up and ready to go. Um, if you can see down here, you got two small pinholes. This is where your fuel comes out. And um, what you want to do here is uh, get your air gun and uh, uh, blow air in here and hold your finger in the other side and make sure you get two good uh, streams of air coming out. Those are very small holes so they easily get plugged up. So that's something you need to check. People don't even uh, realize they're there I think they don't check and the, uh, they can give you a problem on acceleration. Okay so uh, we don't have to change this post if, you, if or this tube if you are missing the tube, now remember not all of these bees come with it. This is the older style bee. I'll try and do a video on one of the newer ones so it'll be more exact. But at any rate, uh, these are just pressed in. You have to get a drill. If it's broken, uh, get a drill uh, not quite uh, the same size because uh, uh, you want to drill out. You don't want the hole any bigger. You'll have trouble uh, fitting the new one. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and put the choke back on here. It was uh, on. Uh, together, uh, but I took it off after I cleaned it. I sometimes do that So I don't have to get my hands dirty uh, Here's the spring. This is a it's spring loaded or the choke is spring loaded And this is spring we use for it and it goes on just like that and uh, <clears throat> Got a any and an Audi on this thing and the Audi part goes towards the carburetor um, That'll become apparent when you put this clip on don't lose the clip we do not have any of them. Don't even know where you can get them. I'm sure somewhere, but uh, I don't have them through my normal suppliers. Okay, so <clears throat> sometimes they're a bit of a challenge. I should have got my tool for this, but try to refrain from using any special tools uh, when I do a video uh, I uh, don't expect you to have a lot of stuff a carburetor shop might have uh, one thing I do expect that you would have is a, uh, a buffer with a wire brush on it that's what I use to uh, clean the parts after I've cleaned it uh, my cleaner leaves a lot of uh, water spots on the carburetor they look sometimes pretty bad but I'll uh, use that buffer to buff something like this uh, the other thing you can use uh, uh, which I do a lot of is uh, soda blasting if you have a soda blaster that's a great thing to use on carburetors you blast things blow out all the small orifices when you're done and and uh, clean it again or wash it out good so the baking soda of course uh, uh, is okay in a carburetor. Don't use any other kind of blasting. That'll just uh, ruin your carburetor if you do. Okay, uh, so got that in there. Your shaft goes in next. Your shaft goes right in here uh, in between this or in this recess here, as you can see, like that. Uh, we have to load the spring, so we're going to twist it around one time so that it gets uh, loaded. and get it on around here. Okay. You need to get up and around right like that. Okay? You can see that. Alright. And uh, so now you can see that that loads it like that. Okay? Uh, and what that's for is that when you actually uh, open the choke, it's going to make sure the valve gets open. So, now, you either took a picture with your digital camera, which I uh, uh, think you ought to do a lot of, 
and I do it a lot uh, sometimes myself and, and I also put a mark on here and a mark on the carburetor so I know exactly which way it goes uh, there won't be any guesswork like so get it centered uh, kind of hold it down make sure it's in there flush um, and we'll take our uh, screws and put a little lock tight on it uh, we don't want these things to come out and get in the engine that would be pretty costly okay Now I use the blue or the red. I doesn't make too much difference. I think the blue makes it a little easier to take them out when you have to. It's not unusual for me to get things out of order and have to take something back out again. Okay. All right, so there we go. Okay, we got the choke back in. All right, next thing, let's work on the throttle body. I took it all apart. I don't know if I did that on camera, and I don't remember. But at any rate, uh, the uh, oh, I did uh, braze this. If you remember when I took it apart, it was loose, uh, so I brazed it. The other thing you can do is uh, in your shaft here, drill a hole into it and uh, tap it and put a screw in a washer to hold it together. That's something you can do if you don't have a, a way to braise it. Okay, it goes on like that, so when the throttle's wide open, it's going to uh, hit that. And I also marked this. There's my mark right there. And uh, so I believe, uh, let's see, probably goes, yeah. See. Oops, wrong again. Okay, which way did that go? Gotta think about this. So the mark is like that. So, like here, I believe. Okay. Okay. So there. So when we close it, I got the mark here and mark there, so we're good and lined up. All right. So this one takes. I got to get it uh, centered here. Thing turned. Okay. There we go. Okay. Now these holes tend to get a little oblong. So you're going to want to hold this tight. Um, I'll show you here in a minute. Uh, let's see now, where's the screws? Okay, so I use this handy tool I used to use uh, many years ago for putting uh, points in a car, uh, like the Chevy, the distributor sits way in the back, and uh, this was made it easier to get that screw started back there. Get your Loctite. Okay, so I'm going to get the screws. I'm not going to tighten them all the way yet. Like I say, those holes get a little oblong, and uh, uh, what you don't want, you, you don't want any air around the outside of this. You want it. You know, I get it oh, close to tight and I snap it, you know, so it gets good and centered. And then when I go to tighten it up, I'm going to hold it down pretty tight. Um, I want that thing to to seal the best it can because, uh, and, and they're not perfect, you know, you can usually see some light through it, but uh, if you get this uh, valve in backwards or something, uh, it, it's just like having the, the throttle open a little bit and your engine will run, it won't idle slow enough. All right, so uh, we got that in there, and this is the way it would sit on the car, so that's how this is supposed to look. 
and you got it all on there. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, uh, let's go ahead and put it on the uh, carburetor here on the float bowl, and we'll put a new gasket, in which I usually spray with silicone spray lubricant, in case I have to take it off again, and it keeps it pliable. Um, there we go. And uh, okay, it goes like this. I know because the hole in uh, this has to line up. And let's see, I've got my screws. I'd sure like to find some new screws uh, for this. I haven't, uh, not, not to have them correct anyway, I haven't found them. Don't think they're made anymore. Okay. See this is the vacuum that goes up. So uh, all said and done. Hmm. We may have um, to research that one I think I think we're going to want this gasket open like that and we may have to take a little chunk out of it which would be fine but at any rate all right so uh, I'll, I'll have to think about that one okay so now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our accelerator pump and we're going to test uh, our uh, discharge well and make sure that uh, Everything's going to be okay there. Now, you have more than one check ball. Uh, the biggest of the check ball goes in here. And in this case, the smaller one will go in the uh, cap here that goes on the uh, 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 wheel, wheel mount like this. All right, took care of that phone call. All right, so um, uh, where was I? Oh, first uh, I'm going to take a little um, mineral spirits and fill up the reservoir here. Okay, these mineral spirits I use the non-smelly kind. I don't like to use gas, so once you put gas in these things, you can't let them sit around. Uh, these leather cups are uh, okay against ethanol. Uh, what you don't want the leather cup to do is get dried out. Once it dries out, it's, it's shot. All right, so we're going to put in here, and you can see already the fluid's coming out. So when I pump, that's where the fluid should come out. So obviously it's not plugged. We're good to go. All right, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to stick the biggest check ball in there. And... Um, I'm just going to gently hold it down. I should get some pressure on my uh, uh, pump, which I can feel. I'm not getting any fluid out when I push it down out here. Um, so that means the check ball is sealing it, and that's what you want. Now, if, uh, if for some reason it's not sealing, you got fluid coming out of there, uh, use your uh, brass drift punch. Be sure to use brass and uh, tap it a few times with a hammer lightly and then test it again. Uh, don't hit it too hard or you're going to get that check ball stuck in there. You'll never get it out again. Okay, um, so there we go. We're okay there. We'll go ahead and stick our uh, 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 here it is our spring and our T in here and this T I generally uh, you just tap down in there and it stays and that's all you need just needs to stay the, the top's going to hold it in there all right so let me uh, get rid of this fluid okay like I say I test with mineral spirits it seems to be okay uh, the, uh, I test with and I, the carburetor can sit around and it's not going to not going to ruin it. All right, so uh, there we go. Now let's put our accelerator pump together. We get this uh, long spring here, and it goes on here like so. 
and then we got this little uh, moisture looking thing uh, goes in there like that and then we'll get our little arm in here okay now the later models has a round type it's it's put together a little different this is your early model uh, B alright so when you put this in here oops excuse me I gotta put my uh, spring in there this is the return spring goes right in there first uh, oh by the way uh, some of these will have uh, one hole in here and some will have two. This is has one and what that means is that um, the only hole here is a discharge. Now if you have two holes that means one of them is the intake to get fuel in here and that will have a check ball in it. So if you have two holes the one in the bottom is going to need a check ball and that's usually a smaller check ball and um, in your kit it might be aluminum that's where your aluminum check ball would go. Okay, so when you put your, uh, sit there, I forget, I forget my spring again. You know, I do the video, I'm concentrating on getting the video done, and uh, I'm not concentrating on a carburetor sometimes. Um, anyhow, so you put your spring in there, get your accelerator pump down there, and, and watch your uh, leather. You don't want to curl it. Um, also, uh, put a couple drops of oil on your leather before you put it in there, and uh, that will help get it swelled up okay put a little uh, return there we go our linkage on there and uh, yours may be uh, straighter than mine uh, which is fine that that's a different type or a little different model of a B this one fits a 53 Chevy 235 and it's got the three inch flange. Uh, a lot of these are only two and three quarters. I also notice on the bottom of this is a uh, clip on there. Are four numbers stamped on the flange on the face. Yeah, I finished what I was saying. So this is 4468 and you would put the number 700 in front of it. So if you happen to be missing your tag uh, check the bottom. You, you'll have to buff it off probably and see if there's four numbers on here. If there are, add 700. They didn't do that on all of them, uh, but uh, there was a certain time when they did. So, fortunately, uh, this one had no tag, or unfortunately, uh, but fortunately it had those four numbers on there, so I, I can determine the number from that. So that was kind of nice. There's bees, or there's bazillions of these things made, and uh, but we get so many calls about it, they can't find a number on it, no tag, of course. Okay, and I did a video on the three, I think we have three different kits that cover all of the bees, and uh, did, did a video on how to figure out which kit to, to use. Uh, that's pretty uh, self explanatory. I'm using, looking for another clip. Uh, which I had on and off a few times. I got this bigger clip. Let's see if it works. I bet I put it in here. All right, well, I'll find a, a smaller cut. Here it is. Uh, the kits come with these little horseshoe things that you can put on there also. I kind of like to use these clips myself. There we go. All right, so that's on there. So see, there you go. There's your action. Nothing binding. Everything looks good. I tell you, if you follow this video, you get everything. You, you check the things I tell you to check. You do your tests along the way. Um, you take your time and get each piece in like you're supposed to. Um, you can be pretty self-assured when you get the thing on the car that uh, uh, you're going to be good to go. Uh, you're not going to have, it's, it's, you know, if you're having a problem still, it's probably not the carburetor. Uh, 
All right, so let's uh, get the top on here. We have our uh, needle and seat. And this is a Viton uh, type of uh, seat. I got my gasket over there. You got a gasket on it that goes on it. Okay. Use a screwdriver that fits all the way across your uh, seat when you tighten it. Uh, okay. Doesn't have to be uh, super tight. I also uh, We'll spray it with some silicone sealer and kind of flush it out make sure there's no particles in it. Um, this is a good thing to test and now that I got uh, uh, stuff I'd have to wipe it. Anyhow, you put this uh, needle in there, hold it down slightly and blow in your inlet hole and make sure there is no air coming uh, around here. So you can put a little soapy uh, water there if you want to and, and make sure there's nothing coming in around there. Uh, if there is, you got a problem with the uh, uh, seal there. And uh, what you can do, and it's not a big problem with this particular carburetor, but I thought I'd point it out. Just another thing you should test. You, uh, it's those kind of odd things that that'll drive you crazy. And you can use this anaerobic uh, Permatex gasket maker uh, and put just a slight amount. Don't get overboard or get in the fuel. Um, and that'll probably seal that if you have a problem with that. All right, so I got my needle and seat in there, and okay, and then all right. I hope that didn't hurt you. I hit the uh, camera. Okay, get our gasket on here. We have two different gaskets. Uh, you'll have to try them both. Um, I like this one because it actually covers uh, the post hole for the, uh, oh, what they, I can't think what you call these, whale mounts. Uh, it's going to go on here next, on top of the gasket. Okay. Oops, sorry. Got it. Things out of order here. Uh, let's do your power piston. Now the power piston has a spring. These you can't get, so be careful of these. Um, I uh, previously I buffed this out real good, got all the stuff off of it, and I took a, a, my a bottle brush and cleaned out the cylinder in here real good, because you want this thing, the last oh eighth of an inch on the top here. You want this thing to be able to go up and down very easily because all it holds it down is a vacuum and uh, when the uh, car's at idle it, it the vacuum sucks it oh, down like this and uh, feeds into a check ball and so the check ball closes off the port and you don't get extra fuel and then when you get a higher uh, speed you lose vacuum this will come up uh, push the check ball off of the uh, seat and allow more fuel into your carburetor and that's what it's for. So if you're having trouble at high speed performance wise it could be this. It's probably they get very sticky real easy uh, so you may want to check that out. Alright so now that I got that in there correctly there we go. So here's a mistake uh, a lot make. They put the wrong uh, check ball in here, maybe the bigger one, and they get this out and the check ball's still in there and they can't get it out, it's stuck. Well, that's because the wrong check ball's in there. You need the smaller check ball and um, uh, you can't buy these so either you buy another carburetor or the other thing you can do is drill a small hole in the center of this uh, enough to get a wire or something there to poke that check ball out it should come out fairly easy and then just take a little bit of a JB weld uh, don't, don't go overboard again you don't want it mixing in the gas and uh, um, cover up the hole that way with the JB weld and uh, it JB weld seems to hold up fairly well against the gas for how long I don't know but um, that's something you can do so we put the smaller check ball in here I gotta hold the uh, power piston down that goes in there and then we got this little spring uh, this may look slightly different than your uh, original and that's okay that's the spring that goes in there and then we put our little cap on there and the spring will, will fit inside the cap and uh, I'm trying to be careful I don't lose any of these parts 
By the way, uh, when I work on carburetors, I use a, a cookie sheet with the edges up. This one happens to be a metal one. And uh, that way uh, things don't roll off, especially these check balls. They roll off onto the floor. In my place, that's the black hole. You never find them again. Okay, so there you go. See, and it doesn't take much for that to go up and down. You may have to fool with this is think if these get bent, uh, you got to get it centered up. Okay, good there. All right, so the uh, uh, main jet goes in here. You don't necessarily have to replace the jets uh, and put new ones in. Uh, jets just don't tend to wear. Uh, the edges might get chipped. The only time you're changing jets is uh, in case uh, you need to increase or decrease the jet size depending on your elevation, engine, and all that kind of stuff. And what you do in that case is uh, you drive your car for about 20 minutes as, at as, as best a sustained speed as you can. You stop and you check your plugs. If they are uh, gray colored, you're good to go. If they're black, you're getting too much fuel. If it's white, you're not getting enough. Now, you want to get this correct because you're going to ruin your engine if you don't. Uh, so, if it's getting black, try uh, uh, bump your uh, jet size down one and then uh, do your test over again. So a lot of work, but it, it's something you really need to do. Um, that's somebody at Holly uh, tell me that one time. That's, that's how the, you check your Hollies. Okay, so we're going to put the... Uh, and do one at a time. Uh, it sometimes only takes one size. So, and I can tell you, you got to look at your plugs. There's nothing in the book nowadays uh, that's going to tell you what jet sizes to use um, because of the uh, ethanol. You know, 40 years ago they, they didn't have ethanol, and uh, so things have changed. Nine, eighteen. No, I'm sorry. Uh, so you're uh, so what I have printed in the book was 40 years ago, and they're just not going to work. Anyway, you probably need more fuel because the ethanol burns more. Checking my float level, I, I looked it up from my vehicle, which is a 53 uh, Chevy 235. And uh, actually almost all of them are 1 and uh, 9 sixteenths. Um, so I checked both sides. I previously adjusted these, so I know they're okay now. Um, so you're going to uh, check from here with the gasket on to the top of the float. Okay. Uh, if you have to adjust it, you adjust the little tab right here, right there, and uh, don't put any pressure on your needle or you're going to mess it up. It's got a little biting tip on it and it's easy to mess it up, okay? Uh, the other thing you want to look at, make sure these things are centered in the well here. You don't want them to uh, uh, hit the edges in here at all. Uh, if you're getting a flooding uh, uh, problem, uh, that could be one of the reasons so if somebody's got it all bent out of shape okay so I think that covers that so we're ready to put this together also there's the float drop you check the same way uh, I can't think of what this one is but you just measure from here to the bottom of the float with the uh, actually your carburetor is right side up in this case upside down in that case and and typically when you look at your floats uh, they're probably going to be very close to being level. Okay, so we're going to put the two together. There we go. This one takes a longer screw. We do have a hardware kit we sell uh, for these bees, and uh, this kit comes with several parts you can't buy otherwise. I'm going to have to tap that hole out to one bigger. I see it's uh, messed up. So for now, I'll put the three in. And we, uh, there's uh, a couple of different sizes, and we put them both in the kit for these screws. Uh, some have a thicker, a little bit thicker top in, uh, than others, and they take the longer screw, but the, the hardware kit will have two different sizes in it with the lock washers. Okay, and something I forgot to mention on this is uh, 
uh, these tend to get warped out of shape uh, because people tighten them up too much so something about, before you uh, put it back together you might want to check with a straight edge and see and what happens is these get sucked up a little bit and then it doesn't seal in here uh, so a couple things you can do one thing you can do is uh, take a, the, a small file and file these down a little bit to make them a little bit of a lower point which I have done uh, but the best way to do is, is heat them up heat them up and um, you know tap them down a little bit to where they're straight Watch your heat because of these being pot metal, uh, you get it too hot, they'll just uh, more or less kind of explode. Not explode, but uh, it would be totally messed up where you can't use it. So you got to really got to watch your heat. Uh, I tell you that because I've done it. All right, so we got that hooked up. Uh, oh, let's uh, put in our idle mixture screw. The hardware kit has a couple different types. Be sure you match your, your old one. There's... Uh, I forget which one's the earlier and the later. Anyway, we're going to screw it down, gently seat it, and then come back about a turn and a half. Uh, this is something you will uh, adjust uh, after you get it running. Same thing with your idle. I usually don't change these too much. There's a new screw in the hardware kit for this if you want to change it. It's a little bit longer than this one. Um, but this is where you change your idle. Okay, let's see. This goes this way. All right, so this has a spring on it. Let's see. We've got a new one here. I'm going to put the new one on. I like to I like to replace all the parts I can. Well, you just don't know. Tomorrow they may be discontinued the way things go. And... Uh, what did I do with that? Well, I'm not going to hold up the video for that. Okay, so this goes... I have to think about this a little bit. Uh, okay, it goes something like this, okay? Yeah, alright, so this hooks on right like that. And then uh, we put this in here, like that. And then pull it over. because it has to be spring-loaded. Okay. And then we got our little screw here with the little washer to hold it down on there. Okay. So, with the choke open, this is against the idle, and if you watch this, when the choke, uh, when you close the choke, it, it slightly moves this so that it opens your throttle just slightly. You can see you got a little space there now. So that, that lets it idle a little faster um, when it's cold and you need it. Alright, so that's basically it. i got to tap this and put a bigger screw in it. Um, Boys, it, it pays to have a good tap and die set and you're messing around with this classic stuff. Uh, and that's pretty much it. I think that will uh, take care of this video. Um, the only th other thing I got to put on here is the uh, uh, this holder here right here for the uh, choke uh, rod, but not a big deal. Uh, if you don't have one, uh, you can just uh, probably uh, make one yourself something to hold your cable okay so that covers uh, the rebuilding of the Rochester B I hope this video helps you like I say just take your time uh, the, the cleaning it is the biggest part of it um, I use uh, a water-based cleaner uh, which you can too there's uh, for cleaning it up there's a lot of cleaners out there the carburetor cleaner uh, actually, I have someone that gave me a suggestion that, uh, that's been in the business a long time. I'm going to post that on the website. I can't think of the name of it right offhand, but uh, uh, he uses a, a, a cleaner that soaks it in, uh, and then he uh, sprays it down with carburetor cleaner when he's done to get all that off. It's important not to use things like WD-40 around it. Uh, don't use uh, 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 most gasoline additives. Uh, we have one that's made especially for the ethanol. You'll find that most gasoline additives have alcohol in it, and uh, alcohol is the problem. 
uh, and it doesn't matter whether your uh, uh, carburetor kits are ethanol ready or not if the ethanol, ethanol separates from the gas it's going to ruin your uh, uh, rubber parts uh, because you got almost a hundred percent alcohol in there and uh, you just can't have it so like I say we do have an additive that uh, I've, I've looked for a long time and finally ran across something that actually works so anyway uh, enough of commercialism that's your video I appreciate you watching